I really want to join a gym, but I just feel I need to lose some weight first and then I'll join. If that's a phrase that you've never heard before, then you'd be surprised how often it comes up. And if it seems completely illogical to you, well, yes, it may be illogical because where it's coming from is nothing to do with weight in the first place in most instances. But that doesn't mean to say that the foundations of it are completely wrong. And that's what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. So let's pull up a chair and talk it through. Hey there, and thanks for joining me in another video in this series of videos of The Gym Paradox, the pros and cons of joining a gym. There's quite a few videos up on the channel already, so if you haven't checked out any of those, go and have a browse through the titles of the others and see if any of them are of any interest to you. And as always, I will leave a link in the description below to the original piece of content up on dcsfit.com, the big long article from which all these videos have been derived. And while you're down there, if you wouldn't mind, as always, giving this video a like and subscribe to the channel while you're there if you if you care to and you can always hit that notification bell if you want to see these videos as soon as they go up because there's quite a few more to come just in this subject alone and there'll be many other videos going up on various aspects of health and fitness in the future. So today what I wanted to talk about was the concept of having to lose weight before joining a gym. Now that might seem like a very strange and alien concept to, to many logical minded people, but it is a phrase that gets trotted out time and time again, and it has been for many, many years. It's a very, very common reason for people not going and taking out a gym membership when they say that they want to get fitter. Now, I'm not saying that everybody has to go and join a gym, just go and check out the previous videos to understand that I do believe that there's a bit of come and go as to whether or not a gym is the right place, or right environment for you. But when it comes to being a reason why you shouldn't join a gym, it, it just seems incredulous that that's how somebody might think. But when we strip back the layers a little bit and start to think about why somebody's saying that in the first place, the reality is it's got nothing to do with needing to lose weight in order to get the most out of the gym. It's to do with an intimidation factor. It's the fact that if you're feeling like you're you're not in shape and you want to walk into this environment where everyone else is in your head fit and healthy and you know because they go to the gym regularly they they already look good and feel good and and you're going to stick out like a sore thumb and you're going to feel incredibly intimidated just walking through the door and very self-conscious and because of that you're not going to get the most out of the place then it's not the weight that's the problem it's your self-image at that point and whether or not a gym is the right place for you is well, it's still up for debate at this point, but getting to the source of why you're thinking the way you're thinking is going to help you find the correct path for you in the first place. If you look at it and you, you on evaluation, you think, no, it's just a self-conscious thing. I really feel like I need the environment that is a gym. I need the tools that are there to make the most of my journey going forward. I've evaluated what the obstacles are and a gym would overcome those obstacles, but I'm feeling pretty self-conscious. Then have a look around at the gyms that are available because there will be some out there that are quieter, that um, are maybe a little more segregated in their layout. So maybe they've got rooms rather than, than a big open space or when you walk in, if you go for a tour and actually wander around the place, you might think, well, actually, the people that are in here are similar level to me, and, or there's certainly some of them that are a similar level to me, and I feel comfortable here. But the only way you're going to know is to go and have a look. But don't use the reason that you need to lose weight as the reason for not joining. Be, be honest with yourself as to why you're not going ahead. And the reason that I say that is because if you don't, when you go down that path of saying, I need to lose weight first. What you're likely to do then is try something crazy. What I see most people do are things like incredibly insane diets, you know, 600 calorie diets or cabbage soup diets or shake based diets. All these kind of things are, are there to put you in a, an incredibly low calorie state, calorie intake state, and you lose quite a lot of weight quite quickly 
for a short period of time and then you pile it all back on again. You're, you've got no energy to go to the gym at the end of it because you don't have enough energy coming into your body to allow you to function properly. So by doing something incredibly insane, when you actually stop to think about it, you're setting yourself up to a position where you're not going to go to the gym at that point anyway. And actually what you're going to do is put yourself in a position where you're going to feel like a failure because you do it for a while and it seems to work and then it stops working. And, and it always will in those situations. It will always stop working. And then you feel like you are the failure because the system works, but now you have failed to keep it up. Whereas in fact, it's more of a, uh, your body's response to, to being deprived is going to start kicking in into overdrive and, and your response is going to be, I need to eat and you start binging or, or you just can't keep up with it because you don't have the energy. So you're not doing anything anymore. So you're not burning calories anymore, that kind of thing. That's all topics that we can go into in another video. But the point is that by just shying away from a thing, not understanding why you're walking away from it and why you're trying to do something else is not going to set you up in a position where you're taking a healthy choice moving forward. Now, it may well be that when you stop to think about it, a gym isn't the right environment for you at this time because maybe you do have limitations that you've got to overcome. Now, I've touched on some of these things before where if, if you've got imbalances in your body and you're going to walk into a gym and try and do training the way that other people are doing it. So you might walk in and think, I don't really want to know what I'm doing here. I'm going to go and join a class and you're going to do some Les Mills style classes. So you're going to do body pump, for example, and you're moving weights around, but you've got an imbalance where one side is one side, one shoulder is tight and the other side is weak. So you're ending up in a position where the range of motion in this side is poor and yet this is the one doing all the work because this one doesn't have any any, any strength behind it to keep you going. Now you're just sort of ending up skewing your body into positions that it's not supposed to be in and you're making the situation worse. By not addressing that, that issue first, you're putting yourself in a position where you're just making the problem worse and again, you're more likely to give up. The whole point is to make choices that are actually going to benefit you going forward and are going to optimize your journey from where you are now to where it is you feel you want to be. And that involves laying foundations to a, a good fitness practice going forward. So if when you get to that point, you're thinking, I need to do something, I think it really comes back to the all or nothing approach. When I talk about the all or nothing approach, I've addressed this a little bit in a previous video, but to touch on it again here, the most common response to wanting to make a change is that they have to do everything. So you've gone from a position where you're just sort of drifting along, maybe convincing yourself, oh, I should really do something. I should really try and get a bit fitter. I should really try and, try and watch what I'm eating, that kind of thing, try and drop a few pounds, try and get a little bit healthier, that kind of thing. Then when that, that trigger hits where you decide, no, no, I'm going to do something about it. This is it. I'm going to make a change. Suddenly everything all happens at once with the, the goal being I'm going to get my diet completely clean and I'm going to go to the gym five, six times a week. I'm going to be going to two classes a week. I'm going to do strength training. I'm going to do cardio. I'm going to do high intensity interval training. All these things, they all get piled on at once. And because you don't 100% know what you're doing with any of it, you do it all in a very extreme kind of a way or you just try and follow what other people are doing and none of that was designed for you and you end up doing it poorly and as a result, you're more likely to end up giving up. So you see the thread here. We're always ending back in that situation where you're hitting a brick wall and you end up stopping and that's what we want to avoid. Whereas if you were to sort of stop and say, right, okay, what one thing could I do? I mean, th this is one of these things that could actually kick in quicker as a result of the fact that, that it's not an overwhelm to your system. You don't feel like you have to drag it out to the point where you feel miserable to the, like so miserable that you're desperate to do something. Could you make a small change immediately? For example, if you look at it on a baseline and say, uh, what, what are the, the basics that just hold you up as a human being, that allow you to function as a human being? Well, water is always a common one for that. Do you drink enough water? Two litres a day for anyone exercising is almost never enough. 
it's something that's put out there. A lot of the government guidelines that are put out there, the, the two litres of water a day, the five fruit and veg a day, these kind of things, these are put out there as minimums. They're, they're put out there as something that feels achievable to many people because if they actually said 10 portions of fruit and veg a day or you should be drinking three and a half litres of water, most people's reaction, because they drink so little or eat so little of those things, would be, I can't do that and therefore don't do any of it. But if you're in a position where at the moment you drink maybe a litre, a litre and a half of water, or you don't drink any water, you drink a couple of cups of coffee in the morning, and other than that, you drink fizzy drinks or a glass of wine or something, then there's room for improvement there. And that improvement would definitely help you in a situation where you end up joining a gym. Because if you're walking into a gym dehydrated, then you're not going to get the most out of the workout anyway. So you're better getting these things in place quickly and setting that baseline so when you walk onto the gym floor, you can actually make the most of it. And it's something you can do immediately. Are you getting enough sleep consistently and uh, with regularity? So do you go to, the bed, go to bed at a similar time every night, wake up at a similar time every morning? And that means seven days a week, not five days a week. So if you're not doing that, that's maybe something to be working on. It's not uh, uh, you're a failure if you're not doing it. It's not a criticism if you're not doing it. It's just something that you can look to improve on. And you don't have to go from it being very, very poor to being perfect overnight. It's just a case of saying, well, okay, you drink a, a litre of water a day at the moment. Could you up that to a litre and a half? Could you drink an extra glass of water if, if you don't drink a glass of water for example first thing in the morning that's a very good time to do it get up in the morning have a glass of water because you're probably a bit dehydrated overnight anyway you drink that and you move on so have you got that right yet this is something that can start to make you feel better same with the sleep patterns because if you're not getting the right sleep when you go and join the gym and you start training you're going to improve during the recovery process and the recovery process happens when you're recovering and a lot of that happens at night when you're asleep. So if you're not getting good, good quality sleep, then the chances are you're not going to get the most out of that those training sessions anyway. So there's those things. Then you can start looking into your mobility in general. Are you moving correctly? Are you Do you sort of favor one side when you walk, for example? Is your body slightly twisted? Is your posture out? Is your spine in alignment? Are your shoulders in the right position? Do you feel tension up the back of your neck because you sit at a computer all day and it's all very hunched up? Is there anything you can do about these things that could loosen everything off so that when you get to the gym, your movement is a little bit more free-flowing in order to allow you to move forward? Now, don't get me wrong, there are some gyms that you could go and join and they will help you with this, but they're few and far between. When you're looking at big commercial gyms, they are likely to tell you that they're going to help you with these things, but as we've discussed already, the quality and the quantity of what you're going to get out of that or out of their input is going to be not quite living up to what you thought it was at the point of doing the tour. So going in forearmed with the right questions is a much better place to be. So generally speaking, if you can take a little bit of a step back and think to yourself, why is it that you're resisting joining a gym in the first place? Is it because a gym maybe isn't the right environment for you right now? And if that's the case, that's fine. Nobody's saying that a gym is for everyone. They're not, it's just a tool. It's just a, a series of tools. It's an environment and a series of tools that you can use on your journey. If it's not the best thing for you right now, then don't waste your time. But if it is, if there, there is something out there for you or you feel that there could be, go and evaluate what's out there and find the right place for you by doing that self-evaluation before you begin. Now, this goes with anything. It doesn't have to be just about saying, I need to lose weight before I join a gym. It could be some people will come in and think, oh, I need to get stronger before I join a gym. I've heard that one a few times, mainly because people are coming in then thinking, I can't even do press ups or um, body weight exercises. What's the point of me being in using all these tools? Now, that's a fairly valid argument. You could go away and work on your body weight setup. But at the same time, there might be some, some instances where you could go in and you could be using things like resistance bands, or you could be using light weights, but through short ranges of motion, 
just to, to sort of load your body up, get your nervous system ready for doing more work. So it's a balance between the two and you're more likely to get that inside a gym. Where it does fall down is where people start going in and just start using machines blindly. That's, that's where it doesn't really work out. And especially if you are feeling self-conscious, hiding behind the machine, you know, if, you, if you've got like a pec deck, for example, and it, it sort of feels like it's encasing you and you're in and you, you, you're almost like the, the movement itself is shutting yourself off from the rest of the gym floor. And you might feel safe there, sort of hidden inside that little machine, but you're not making choices based on what's best for you at that point. You're now making choices based on what feels comfortable. Any, any improvement in your life is always going to come from getting a little bit outside your comfort zone. If it's what you're comfortable with, it's probably what you're doing already. And if it's what you're doing already and you're not happy, then, well, nothing's going to change unless you change. So taking a little bit of time to sit back and think about what is best for you and what small steps can you take before you make that decision. Where, where I'm really going right back to the start with this is don't make the decision that you need to do everything. Don't make the decision that you need to lose weight, join a gym, uh, get fitter, get stronger, all, all these things all at once. And, and you're because you now haven't done one of them, you haven't done the join the gym part of it, then you feel almost like a failure because you walked in, you've used this as an excuse to get out of the door, you know that you just felt uncomfortable there and you feel like, no, I, I can't do this. And now because you can't bring yourself to join a gym, there's nothing you can do. There's always something you can do. When it comes to your body, you can't get a quick fix. What you can do is you can build the foundations that slowly build you up to get you to the point where the changes start to become apparent. You start to feel good about them. Because you've built this strong foundation, you can start to accelerate and build even more and more and more. And then you can start to really put the finishes on it. And that all sounds very architectural, but again, I'm always going to come back to that. It's like building a building. You put in strong foundations, it's boring, nobody cares about the foundations, no one's ever going to see the foundations. But if they're not there, you can't get the big spectacular structure on the top. And even then, the structure doesn't usually look that impressive. It's the finishes that you put on the structure. But it takes a long time and a lot of thought and careful process to get to that point where these finishes can be put up safely. And that's what I want for you guys. So when, when you're thinking about whether or not the next step is right for you, when you let your ego or your self-image get in the way, that's where the problems start to happen. Being honest with yourself is the biggest thing that you can do in order to accelerate your progress when it comes to your health and fitness. Take some time, really think about it, reflect on what it is you want, what is it that's holding you back from doing the things that you think you want to do. Assess whether or not you can push through that and actually move, move forward with those things or whether there is something else you could be doing that's on a smaller scale that will build you up. But the idea of just saying, I want to lose weight before I join a gym, it doesn't work. It's never worked. I've never known anyone ever and in my my years and I, i've been in this industry for uh 16 years now and i've never known anyone in that time who said they're going to go and lose weight before joining a gym or doing whatever it was that we're going to do who has then gone and lost the weight and then come and join the gym or move move things forward they're usually still talking about it five six years down the line they're making the same speeches on facebook they're making the same speeches on twitter just break the cycle break the cycle for you and all you have to do is take five minutes to sit back and reflect and be honest with yourself as soon as you're honest with yourself then you can truly start to make steps forward overcoming the obstacles that are genuinely in your way so i hope that's proved useful if ever you've used the phrase, I need to lose weight before I join a gym, or in the future, if you ever hear it coming out of your mouth, I'm hoping you'll take some time to sit back and reflect on where you are at that moment and make some better choices moving forward. In the next video, we're going to be talking about joining a gym for the first time. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that you're a complete gym virgin. You've never been on a gym floor before. It might be that you've been to a gym before, but it just didn't work out for you. That might have happened several times. But when you next join a gym, 
you're joining for the first time because it will be your last time. So maybe it should be called joining a gym for the last time because you're going to join and you're going to stick with it this time. How can you get the most out of your gym going experience? How often should you go? What should you be doing to plan things out before you get there? How can you get the most out of your experience when you're on that gym floor? We're going to be touching on all of these things and a lot more in the next video. So stay tuned for that. So if you haven't already, again, if you could give this video a like and subscribe to the channel so you get the next video as soon as it comes up. And remember, you can always hit that notification bell if you want to get notifications as soon as new videos go up on the channel. Much appreciated. But until next time, take some time to reflect on what is best for you. Don't overthink things. Don't overstress yourself. Have a phenomenal day and I will see you next time. Bye for now.